Hi everyone, Chris here, and for the last four days, I've been testing out Fidu's new M1 Pro. So the Pro model is an upgrade to the original M1. We now have a 500 watt motor, much more potent and up to 40 kilometer top speed if you unlock it. So out of the factory, it's locked to 25 kilometers per hour. The battery capacity is also larger now too. It's 12.6 amp hours. It's a removable battery. It has the full suspension on it. And of course, those iconic, very different looking fat tires on them that are four inch wide. And it does have the same 20 inch rims. Now my time riding around and using this bike, it's been so much fun. It is an awesome e-bike, but there are definitely a few things you should know first before considering buying one of these. Naturally, the Fidu M1 Pro does come in a large box. It does weigh about 25 kilos. It has a lot of padding around it and they have strapped a lot of the parts together to keep it from moving. And my unit sustained absolutely no damage to it whatsoever, which is great. Now there's a little bit of light assembly. We do have to install the handlebars. It's just a couple of screws, Allen key bolts, and we do have some Allen keys included. All the tools we needed are included assembly of the front wheel and the charger that's in the box as well, of course, and we do need to charge this up. Normally fully charge it before actually using it, which a full charge will take about seven hours. Now, just to point out as well that the charger does have a fan in it. So it's a fan cooled charging brick and you will hear it humming away, but it doesn't get hot at all, which is good for safety reasons. So the M1 Pro here is a bit heavier than the M1 because we've got a larger battery capacity. So it is 12.6 amp hours or 614 watt hours. And the bike is about 25, 26 kilos, which means it is actually very heavy and being a foldable, slightly heavier as well because of the hinge, which you can see right here in the middle. So I will show you how it folds up. And right here is a little cover where we plug it in to charge it. So charge time is about eight hours. Now this particular little flap here to keep the water out and the waterproofing, I don't actually particularly like. It's very hard to get in there and the placement of it, I just wish they'd gone with a better design here because I'm struggling to actually push that in properly to give it a watertight seal. Now you probably would have noticed why have I got a key here dangling? Well, that is because there's an on and off lock switch right here. So you need to insert the key turn it on and keep the key in it. It won't actually drop out. It's definitely gonna stay in place there. So that is our main battery on and off switch right there too. And the reason we've got this, I think for security, so you can disable the bike, but I just kind of wish it didn't have it in such an awkward location right here. You can see the cable routing. And of course, yes, I do need to take this key off. So nice big fat wheels on these that are more suited actually to the bad roads that I have around here in Denia, Spain, where I'm recording this particular review. So we have now a 500 watt hub motor here, much more power, 48 volts instead of the 36. And we've got a 160 millimeter disc brakes here, mechanical. Now these tires, they are four inches wide and you normally run a lower PSI as well to help soak up some of those bumps. And we do have right here a stand too as well, which is quite sturdy. It doesn't rattle around or make a noise or anything. And it does have full suspension, but it is not brilliant full suspension. This is the shocker, which is Ken Shi. Never heard of it, me neither. Uh, it does offer a little bit of dampening, but not really a lot of travel. This particular shock only in my testing or so seems to have really about a centimeter. So about 10 millimeters or so of travel and that is it. So I hope in future versions, they can at least go with some known brand components for our shock absorbers, something like a Fox or Rock Shock. Even if it's just the low end stuff, I think would be a lot better. And another 180 disc here at the front. Sorry, I said 160 before, but no, these are larger brakes than the other Fidu bikes I've reviewed. So 180 discs, which is good. And I'll talk a little bit about when I ride it, how the braking performance is. So this shock here, they claim 55 millimeters of travel with the front shock. Again, no name brand shock. It doesn't really give us that much travel. I find it's more like 30 millimeters of travel we are getting out of this shock. Now, if you were gonna be powering up some climbs, you can lock out that front shock and there are, well, apparently some adjustable rebound settings, but it doesn't really seem to do anything. On the rear, they just give us a reflector. I would have liked to have seen a built-in light, would have been nice, considering also how expensive this particular bike is. So I'm using my own LED bright light here just for safety later on when I ride home. And then just how comfortable is this seat? Well, I've been riding around sitting on it, of course, and I don't find it to be bad at all. It's only got about a centimeter of padding, 
but with the tires and the suspension, I think it's enough. Now we do have foldable pedals here and normally the foldable pedals, I don't particularly like too much because I find that they're not normally as strong as normal pedals, but they're using a very solid hard ABS style plastic. And you simply just press in the middle here and you can fold them down or up. And overall they have a sturdy design. So if you don't whack into curves or things with your pedals, I think these are gonna do all right. Of course you can easily replace them just like any bike with higher quality pedals. The front crank on this one is like the other Fidus I have reviewed, so the D4S and the D11, which I recently reviewed in the channel, it has 52 teeth. I wish it was a little larger, it might help with some of those climbs, and it feels just like the top end speed when pedaling could actually be a little bit better. It might also be to do with the fact that we've only got 20 inch wheels on this bike, and I'm more used to larger wheels. And again, just like the D11 I reviewed from Fido, we have our trigger right here. So you just press down and you don't need to press off. This is actually very handy when you feel like you need a bit of a boost when you're riding climbing up a hill. It's great to just tap this, push down and then get that assistance up to, well, it's a maximum assistance. So it's gonna give you that 500 watts and it can help boost you up to 25 kilometers, which this is legally limited to. But there are videos out there where you can remove that limit to get this thing up to over 40 kilometers per hour. This is our front brake here and the brake lever is good, but it's cable mechanical brakes here so it doesn't have hydraulic calipers. And the grips, for included grips, they are okay. Lock grips would have been better, but they're not actually too bad. The Dorelia on this one is seven speed, it's Shimano. So we've got the selector right here for our seven gears. And you only really use the lower numbers on the climbs. Most of the time on the flat, of course, if you are riding on roads, then you'll be using number seven there. The selector itself and the gear changes are smooth without any problem. So that is to go up the gears and this is to go down. So just like a normal bike, of course. And here we do have the controller. So hold down here to power on. The display is very easy to see even in direct sunlight, but it's hard for me to capture at the moment on camera due to shutter rates and other differences there. So here is our mode. So we've got the three different modes of assistance. I think it's like 25%. 50% and then 75% assistance. And there is a sensor in the crank that detects your pedaling as well. And once it knows you need that assistance, it will give it to you, which is quite handy. And you definitely feel it, but more on that later in this in-depth review. Here we have the headlight for the front headlight on and off and our horn, give you a quick sample. It is loud, just like the other bikes I've reviewed from them. So with our handlebars, they fold as well, just for storage reasons, to get it down into a smaller size to fit in a car boot. Now the latch does have a security here that you push in. It's a little bit of plastic. And this is the extra we are paying for these bikes, is the foldability. If you don't need the foldability, then definitely look at e-bikes that don't fold. They'll probably be lighter, and they will also probably be a little bit cheaper. So pulling this out, we have the latch here, which is quite rigid, and you simply need to just pull it down, which can be a little bit difficult. And then it flops down, the whole handlebar assembly there to one side. And this design we've seen before, so this has a little security clip that should be in there. Sometimes it pops up bouncing around, so you might need to just give it a bit of a tighten up here, the Allen key. They've got some tools in the box to help it. And just general safety as well. When you get a bike delivered, from China especially, it's in the package, it vibrates around, things do loosen up a little bit. So just go around and tweak everything up, make sure everything's tight and safe before starting to ride. So flicking that up, it gets it out of the way and you can just simply pull on this now, okay? And then you push the bike around, uh, which is a little hard to do. The hinge is quite stiff. It takes a bit of effort, and then you can see that then opens up. And now you see why we did have that lock as well. So it's not just an on and off for the main battery pack, but it also locks it into place, and it is removable. There's a little latch here that you can pull out and slide the whole battery pack right out. And this is what it looks like when you fold it up completely. So size wise, you can still actually drop the seat down. The seat post does go up and down like a normal bike adjustable. So I'm 182 centimeters in height and I weigh about 78 kilos. And I find that this bike is a good size for me. So frame size being a bit larger and for a foldable bike, it's definitely not the smallest here. The full folded dimensions you can find on their website and also in the link in the description of this video. So beautiful evening here for a ride along the coast. And I'm just gonna show you what it's like to ride to set off. So I've noticed that with the handlebars, the distance between my knees is about there maximum. 
and that is really good. So is actually a bit more than what I had on the D11 and definitely the D4S, you can see quite a bit there. So it's very comfortable, the frame with uh, especially larger, taller people, I think this one's gonna be fine. Now we've got a trigger here to start off, so you don't actually have to kick off first. You can start off in any gear because if you use the assist motor, it's actually got a lot of power just to push you along. And you can probably see I've got it at the moment in mode number one. So when you start to pedal, the crank sensor will detect that and give you a bit of an assist or just simply hit the trigger and away you go without even having to pedal. Now they claim you can get up to about 40 to 60 kilometers just using the electric and no pedaling and I think with my weight especially with the climbs around here that I don't see that as being possible. My calculation I think is around 35 kilometers to 30 kilometers just using that. It's going to vary of course on your weight. So quite bumping along here and along the coast. I don't go along here with the road e-bikes because it's far too bumpy. It looks like it's smooth and flat but it actually goes up and down all over the place and the shock is clanking away, you can probably hear it. And you can probably hear the motor too as well, whining away. I don't want to go too fast, because I'm only doing this one-handed, just to make sure this footage here is a little bit steady. Again, I just wish the suspension was a little better than what it really is. Now the PSI in the front tire, I did end up lowering that right down and that has made quite a bit of a difference. In fact, a huge difference, just running quite a bit less than what it came with. So the tire is soaking up some of these bumps as well. Otherwise, it's gonna be really rough going along here. So I'm now gonna go up this big climb here right to the end of the coast. And oh, you can feel the motor kick in when it does. And it really offers just so much torque and power. I mean, this climb, is effortless so far with this particular bike with all of that 500 watts of power double the power compared to the d11 and the d4s that i reviewed in the channel this is just so much easier now i'm having to put a little bit of power into it i am in mode three but barely working up any kind of sweat here now a little gravel ahead a bit rough and the front suspension certainly is making a little bit of noise and rattling around. Okay, so let me recap here now my findings and time testing out this bike for a few days. I managed to clock up quite a few kilometers on it. And what I have noticed is the range, I don't think is anywhere near their claim. So they claim about 130 kilometers. Now, when they test this, that is in perfect conditions and with a rider that's probably about, well, a good 20 or 30 kilos, definitely less than I am. Someone that's maybe 50 kilos shorter on the flat, just looping around. So I'm getting every bar that I lose on the battery percentage gauge, I'm getting about 20 kilometers. So I've calculated, I'm looking somewhere between about 70 to 80 kilometers using the mode one assistance. So that is quite a bit less than 130 kilometers there. So you're never gonna get that expected range. And it's just like all those adverts for the cars and everything else, and even electric cars, mileage will vary. And it definitely does with this particular model here. Now the comfort of it using this particular e-bike the suspension is a big downfall. That's a big con for me. I don't actually think the suspension on this is really up to the job. It's just for tiny little bumps. I wouldn't go as far as to take the 20 inch, even though they're fat wheels, down the typical trails I ride with my proper mountain bike that has RockShox and Fox branded suspension, which is of course a lot more expensive. Speaking of price, expensive. It can sell for quite a high price tag. I have seen about 1,500 or 1,300 US dollars. And I think for that price, Mm, definitely, I don't think it's a go uh, considering the components they have used on it, but there are coupons and it will sell for about a thousand euros. So if you're in a, into a bike that's got those fat wheels, more comfortable on the roads, then okay, maybe then, but just bear in mind those things I mentioned about the suspension, about the range you're gonna be able to get out of this. Heavy bike as well, so 25 kilos, 26 kilos to lift. If you fold it up and you lift it upstairs, or you're gonna put it away, it's a bit bulky for that, and that's another thing there. Now, I do like it, don't get me wrong. It is a nice bike to ride on, especially if you lower the PSI on the front wheel and even the rear a little bit. It can just help to soak up some of those bumps. 
I, what I do really like, I'm gonna end on a positive note, is the power this thing has. The 500 watt motor for those climbs is effortless. I just roar up hills. And if you put a bit of force into it with your own pedal power and then the assistance, you can over, override it with the trigger, you can really rock it up there. And that is absolutely great. It makes it a very fun bike to ride around and it's very unique looking as well. It's kind of a cool looking bike. A bit awkward maybe with the fatter wheels for some people and my first fat tire bike I think it's a lot of fun it's just consider those cons there before pulling the trigger and also do you need a foldable bike get a normal bike an e-bike if you don't need the foldability because that's an extra of course we're paying for that I've mentioned in some of my other e-bike reviews so thank you so much for watching this video I do hope to see you in the next up and coming e-bike review if there is one in the future maybe next year and I do hope to see you then